Hello, I'm Mike Matre, and I'm the host of Healthcare Matters, where the legal and medical fields come together to discuss healthcare matters. Today's guest is Tad Dudlin. He is a partner at Kaufman Dolowich Volick. Welcome to Healthcare Matters. Thanks, Mike. Pleasure to be here with you. Well, Tad, how has the move from paper medical records to electronic medical records affected best practices for entering data into a patient's chart? And what guidance would you give physicians so that they are using best practices when entering data into their electronic medical records? Yeah, it's an interesting issue because we're on the uh, cusp of, well, maybe maybe well into uh, electronic records and portability, accessibility, and even on our phones with mobile devices. Uh, so gone are the days, or almost extinct are the days, of actual manual files. Uh, and it is has a lot of pros and cons, and it has a lot of uh, room for error, although the efficiencies and the technological advances, uh, I, I think, in my opinion, outweigh uh, the, the old way of doing things. Um, best practices in the old days, uh, if you will, involved uh, ensuring timely reporting, uh, accurate record keeping for the medical files, uh, and hopefully contemporaneous reporting, but there was typically a disconnect, and if you've ever reviewed some doctor notes, uh, you know it can be difficult, if not almost impossible, to read and understand what they're writing. Uh, and also, you've got a challenge because if the doctor is no longer available to testify to explain the records, uh, it's going to be difficult for anybody to do so. Uh, now, uh, and previously, we had a nice chain of custody with medical records, assuming folks uh, were adhering to best practices, and so anybody who uh, entered a, a log entry note or wrote up a, a medical file note, they put either their initials or their identifying information in there. So uh, reviewing insurance companies and or uh, professionals or uh, legal practitioners could understand who was saying what and contact Dr. Jones or Dr. Smith and find out uh, what they meant when they wrote uh, some entry. Now uh, we've got the electronic data entry and we have electronic databases both uh, internally and externally and it's a bit of a challenge uh, with the old guard if you will or the uh, the pre uh, text and the pre phone at your fingertips generation and the new uh, modern method of entering data and speaking uh, the same rules really apply, but with more attention to uh, electronic uh, privacy and security and internal and external uh, protection measures to avoid a, a hack or a leak uh, or inaccuracy in reporting. So I think that a, a blend between best practices from the old day, if you will, and the new day and proper training uh, and, and kind of uh, internal securities and safeguards and doctors have uh, continuing education requirements and technologi technological advances and data entry are certainly on there, including, of course, under HIPAA privacy uh, to ensure accuracy, privacy, and security in the reporting. So hopefully we're going to have a more, and I think we will, have a more efficient uh, method of recordation and sharing and use. Uh, that being said, there are... Um, there are always uh, issues out there with new technology, and there are some here as well. Well, thank you, Tad, for joining us on Healthcare Matters, where the medical and legal communities come together to discuss healthcare matters. Uh, I hope to talk to you again soon. Great. Thanks a lot, Mike. Corp American Medical Society uh, study called for a complete design overhaul of electronic medical records to improve their usability. If you had the opportunity to advise an EMR vendor, uh, how would you recommend that they redesign the product? What changes would most benefit the defensibility of, of a malpractice claim? 